It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and I'm going to talk today about something that I haven't really covered much at all as far as open source goes and that's really open source gaming. Now the open source gaming world does exist. It isn't always the greatest but then there are some really really terrific open source games out there as well. The thing that I want to talk about today is really not so much the games themselves, and if you're interested in hearing about more open source games and seeing how you get those games and how you install those games, maybe how you run a server if it's a game that can have multiple players on a server, let me know in the comments and I will gladly do one of those videos uh, down the road so that we can see that together. But me being a creative person, I consider myself creative. I am not an artist by any stretch of the imagination, but I do consider myself creative. Um... I have lots of ideas and lots of things that I want to explore and try, and sometimes I just don't have the knowledge that I need to do that. So I love finding applications like what I'm about to show you, and if you haven't heard of these, you're in for a treat, I think. So the first one is called Game Develop, and I will have these links in the show notes and in the description, but this is called Game Develop, and the great thing about it is that it is basically a way to make a video game kind of like what you see here, without knowing how to write any kind of code. So they have created basically an open source application that is almost completely drag and drop, click and select, and, and just really tremendous. So I, I want to point you to a couple of videos that I'll also have linked in the description and in the show notes. And it's where one of the guys, Wesley, who does a lot of their tutorial videos, shows you how to make the Asteroids game. So if you're if you're my age or older, you'll remember Asteroids from when you were a kid. It was an arcade game, and you were in a little ship, and you flew around, and you basically spun around and shot stuff up. It was awesome. But these days, you know, it's so fast to make that that he used basically one video to make the game and make it actually usable. And then he did another video just to show you how to, like, really spice it up and make it really fun and cool. And I'd say if you combine those together and you followed his tutorial, just not knowing anything at all except having done some of the basic tutorials of how to use GDevelop for clicking and dragging and putting things, you'd be able to recreate what he did in under an hour. And I would imagine he probably did it in about 20 minutes total. Uh, he fast forwards through a little bit because he's just repeating some stuff. But I mean, really, it, it's just such a quick watch. It's really impressive what you can do with something like this. Now, this game you're seeing here would take a little bit more because you're creating some movement and stuff like that with your character. But, I mean, totally awesome. I think this is such a cool thing. And if you're a parent or you're someone who says, you know what, I love the games that are out there, but sometimes I'm not sure about games for my kids. Or I have a game that I want to make for my kids to teach them something. Maybe, maybe you're like me and my wife. We have nieces and nephews, and we do want to teach them lessons, and we want them to learn things. And... One of them is programming. I think that knowing about computers and programming is such an important thing in a person's life. And I cannot stress how much I think that that would be a terrific thing for them to learn as kids. And I think a, a platform like this for kids who are 7 to 12 and have never really coded is amazing. So this, I loved finding this. I was so super excited to find this. Again, over at the self-hosted Reddit, I just was kind of searching around and people had some really, really great awesome awesome answers so always go go check out uh, reddit and see what you can find the open source reddit the self-hosted subreddit i mean there's just so many out there that are that have really great information so this is gdevelop and we'll go into getting this in a minute we're going to install it i'm going to show you how to download it stuff there is a, a free online demo as well the other one though is called superpowers now this is a very similar thing it is open source you can download it it has a linux a mac a windows version so does gdevelop okay you can download this thing and you can actually just use this to open up an IDE and then again they have tutorials that help you learn. Now this one, I would say you want to know some basics and fundamentals of programming because this one is not quite as click and drag and click and select as GDevelop is. Uh, but this one looks really cool and really fun and it makes HTML5 games which I think is absolutely incredible. So you can play those games that you make in a web browser which is awesome. Um, so yeah, this one, Superpowers, is really cool too. I'm really excited about both of these. I'm hoping that I can find a little bit of time at some point to sit down and kind of focus on some of the tutorials and follow them through, kind of get my feet wet, and then I can start actually creating some games for my nieces and nephews that, that I think they will enjoy and that I think will help them learn some things at the same time. I think games are such an incredible way to help kids learn 
new ideas, sometimes even advanced concepts that would normally be considered out of the reach of, of children, I think can really be learned through games and through graphical user interfaces and through really fun things like that. So this is why I'm covering this. Um, really, I'm not going to go into how to use superpowers. I'm not going to go into how to use GDevelop. They have some amazing video tutorials already out there, and I would not be able to do them justice. They have some really big communities from what I'm seeing, and they have community members who also do really great tutorials on how to make an entire game. So if you want to learn that, again, I'll have links to that stuff in the description, but really it's in the help documentation when you install these things as well. But I wanted to go through how to grab these and install them and run them because I think it's super useful. just want to say thank you so much to all my patrons over at Patreon. I truly appreciate your support. I just appreciate that you enjoy my content enough to come over and support me and my efforts in making this content. It really means a lot to me, and I cannot say thank you enough. So thank you again, and let's get started. All right, so the first thing on GDevelop, the one really cool thing is they have a try it online. So I'm just going to open this up. It's going to open up a new tab here, but this looks very much like the, the, the basically editor kind of thing that opens up when you install it as well. Um, it's a little different here for sure, but they've got some really cool stuff that you can just kind of see out of the box. And here's some of their tutorials. So you can just go ahead and start clicking into their tutorials and kind of understanding how things work. And really, if you just kind of follow these things right here in this order, it's going to make it super easy for you to kind of pick up some of these concepts. And you can see it goes pretty quickly. Um, very, very cool. So that you can kind of get in here and kind of see what's happening. So yeah, you can just go all the way to the end here. There's a platformer, there's a top down, there's, ex, you know, there's exporting things, save and load. So, so really some cool stuff. Now, the same guys who made these also made that video game, the asteroids type game. Here's some games, some example games that you can also jump to and kind of check out. And you can get in and see how they're built, which I think is really cool. Because if you're like, okay, how did they do that? Especially if you're playing one of these games, you're like, okay, how do they do that? You can go grab one of these example games and actually look at it and see what they're doing and how they're doing it. And it's really, really kind of awesome when you start thinking about all of the cool things that these people are doing. And they're just using this, this interface that's kind of click and drag. So if you don't want to install it, you just want to try it out, you can absolutely go in here on the online demo and try it out. But we want to install it, right? We want to get it on our own stuff and kind of self-host it. So here you'll see, again, you can try it online, but you can also download. And you see here you've got Windows, you've got Mac, and you've got Linux. So we're just going to click on the Linux download here. And you'll see it's going to download, and it downloads an app image, which I like. That's really great. Uh, and once you get an app image in Linux, if you're not familiar with those things, we just go to Downloads, and we're going to find that file, which I think is right here. So you see it says gdevelop.appimage. So what I like to do is, to just to keep my Linux system kind of cleaned up, I'm going to cut it out of that place, and then in my home directory, I have this folder called Applications. So I'm just going to click into there and I'm going to paste that application right in there. Now when you download an app image like this direct, you're going to right click on it, click on properties, and just go here to the permissions tab. There may be more than one, more than two tabs depending on your distro. But make sure you check this box that says allow executing this file as a program. That's it. You've installed an app image. Now you just double click it. And it's going to open up and you see again it looks just like it did on the browser. It's going to come up, and then here's all of the assets and everything. Again, you can still get to the tutorials, which is great, because the tutorials kind of show you here's the layout of the IDE, here are the objects, here are the events, here's the jump start, you know, everything like that. And the jump start is really cool because it says, hey, not only can you use all of these other things we're showing you, but we've got a bunch of pre-built stuff that just helps you do things, like physics 2D, like already shooting projectiles at people like following your character like rotation like I mean just so many things that if you were trying to program these things it could take quite a few lines of code and they've got a bunch of little pieces of that already built for you and it's in behaviors and events and extensions and you can just do so much with it already out of the box and then there's a bunch more that you can get from the community that they create that are awesome so they kind of show you about that here as well but if you want to create a new project they'll tell you just click on create new project and then you would just name this test project and it's going to tell you where it's going to put this thing which is up to you if you want to change this path you can just click here and pick a different location for where you want to save that stuff um, completely up to you up to you where you put that uh, but yeah I mean the, the default path looks fine to me and then you're going to click on create and you'll see you get this project and you get kind of this this is your level, I guess is the best way to put it. This is the area that you're going to work with. You can change these dimensions. There's all kinds of properties. This this kind of comes already pre-laid out, but you can actually grab and just 
move these over and you can put them close to each other so you can kind of stack them anywhere in the interface that you want to and it's pretty cool and they go through that as well whenever they go into all this stuff and then you can grab this and make it smaller just back to where it was when you started um, and then they have a couple of tabs up here so you have kind of your events area and then you have your screen layout area and then over here you can basically start adding in things which they tell you what all those things are but like a sprite it's kind of like an icon, but it's something you would use like for your character, your player. You might have a sprite for your enemy. You might have a sprite for multiple different kinds of enemies. It's all kinds of really cool stuff. And they have editors that are built in so you can draw what you want for those things. And then they have effects to help you kind of figure out how that works. They have sound effects that help you randomize your sound a little bit and really make some cool stuff. And they go through all of that, like I said. But really, everything is click and drag. Um, on this one, on GDevelop, you do not have to, as far as I've seen so far, they had to write no code. You might have to type something in because it's the name of something you created, and you're telling the system, like, this is the thing I want you to act on. But it, you really just don't have to type, like, there's no coding, there's no syntax involved with how you do this. It's really, really all click and drop, click and drag, select. It's just really awesome. So I highly recommend this one. If you haven't seen GDevelop, definitely go get it. Go check out their videos. I'm going to link you to their kind of main video page in the description as well. So you can go check it out because it's just awesome. Absolutely amazing. So that's GDevelop. I'm going to close that one down. That one's really easy to install because I like the app image. If you're using Windows, it's a, it's an executable. Of course, if you're using Mac, it's just a, you know, drag it into your applications folder just like always. When we go to Superpowers, now they have the same thing. So they have this community. So you can kind of jump over to their community, and you can see here they've got kind of a forum. So you can go check out the forum, ask questions, so you sign up so you can, you know, read other people's posts and learn from other people's questions. That's always the best way to learn. That's the, that's the way I love to learn a lot of things, too. Um, so we'll go back to the main page. Then they have the games. So you can kind of check out all the games that they have available. So here's kind of a Pac-Man looking game. Here's chess. Here's some kind of space game. So I mean just already a lot of really cool games that they've got already out here and I'm sure you can check these out and kind of get ideas. But then they're going to teach you also how to make these games so that's really awesome. So if, again if we go back and then learn. So if you go to learn, they're going to take you through some of this stuff and they're going to show you like here's, here's a tutorial on how to make kind of this game that you're working with. So they do use some TypeScript. They, they do these a few different things. Like I said, this is not all click and drag. There is some development and programming. So if you're a little more advanced, this might be the next step for you. I think it's really kind of a cool thing to try. If you're not quite as advanced, you might want to stick with GDevelop. If you want to learn and get more advanced, then watch their tutorials and kind of learn the syntax as you go. It's, it's perfectly fine to try that. So this is really a, a cool way to do things, I think, as well. So for now, we're going to go to, we're going to move down here to the download now. Once you get to the download page, you'll see this download now button. We're just going to click on that and it's going to ask you how much do you want to donate. Now, it's really cool to donate to open source, but I'm kind of a, I like to try it before I buy it kind of person. But if you get it and you're like, man, I like this, I'm going to use this, I want to keep using it, then you should definitely, you know, think about donating a little money. Donate a dollar, donate a pound, donate a euro, whatever. I mean, if you give them a little something, that's what helps keep projects going. Now, would it be valuable to find out if this project is still active and alive? Absolutely. But... If you just want to test it out, this little link right here will just take you to the download page. And then you pick the OS that you're using. So here's Windows 64, Windows 32, Mac OS. Here's Linux 64. And then they have this asset pack. Now these asset packs are really useful because these have a lot of already pre-drawn, pre-created things that you don't have to go and create yourself. GDevelop has some of those things as well. There's packs that you can go download for GDevelop as well. It'll help you save a lot of time. And again, in those tutorials, the guys who make the tutorials for how to use GDevelop talk about those things. But really useful to know that you may want to grab two of these things. You know, maybe Windows and the Asset Pack or Mac and the Asset Pack or Linux and the Asset Pack. I'm using Linux, so I'm going to click on Download for Linux. It's going to pop up, and there we go. We see it downloading, and it's going. That's it. Now... This is not quite as straightforward. So in this case, we're going to go back to my downloads folder. And we're going to go find the superpowers download here, right here, and it's a zip file. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to right click. And in Linux, generally, you can just say extract here. And it's going to create a folder. There it is. And we're going to jump into here. And right here is this one that says superpowers. It has no extension. 
So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go to properties just like I did before. And I'm going to make sure that it has it checked. It's already checked because it's in a zip folder, but you just want to make sure if it's not working for some reason, go make sure that this executable thing is checked. And then when you're ready, just double click it. I just double clicked it. My mouse is really quiet. Uh, there it goes. It's saying, hey, we're installing it. Just be ready. And it's, you know, welcome to the superpowers. Just give them a, a, a screen name here. And then you can check or uncheck this box. So you can connect to the community chat if you want to. I don't really know what that buys you, but we'll just leave it checked. And it says getting started. So let's just say, yeah, we want to install kind of the basic stuff that we need. So we're going to let this thing run. It's going to go out to the internet. It's going to grab the things that we need. And it lets us know we can manage our local server. And we need to come down here and tell it. But it should start on its own whenever we click on this. So we're going to click OK. And it did. It started our server. But you can start and stop your server down here in the bottom left. Now it tells you here's a server list. So that's this thing over on the left. And it says go double click your server to attach to it. So we're just going to double click it. And then again, we're going to give it our username. I'm not sure why it asks twice, but I guess you could have a username that's different for your own server, maybe. And now we're inside of everything that we need for our server. And this is where we would start actually going through the process of trying to create our game. This is a little bit more advanced, in my opinion, for users than what you would do with GDevelop. But if you want to do some actual programming, get some stuff out of this, then Definitely this one might be the more uh, fun way for you to go. If you're trying to make something specifically for the browser, then this also might be more the way you want to go. Um, it's kind of up to you how you decide which one you want to use. But I wanted to show you both of these options. They're both open source. They're both really cool. They both give you kind of a quick start and a jump start on creating a game. You don't have to go learn how to code for the Unreal Engine. You don't have to go learn how to code for uh, Apple's Metal. You don't, you don't have to go learn Swift. You don't have to go learn C++. You don't have to go learn C. You can just jump in and start really doing some very cool stuff because these folks have created some open source projects that let you get to that point very quickly. And for me, that is powerful. So these are some really, really cool tools. I hope that you guys get something out of this. I hope that you like it. I hope that you'll get out there and try it. And if you create a game, please let me know about it. Send it to me so I can try it because I would love to give it a shot and see how it goes. I love little games that are fun. I love games that are challenging and, and I would love to see that. So if you guys get out there and do that, please jump out there and let me know about it. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.